A lot to get to on a Monday edition of the Locked On Sabres podcast, including another strong performance from Zach Benson. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And be sure to check us out on our YouTube channel where you can watch the show and follow along on us with us there at Sneaky Joe Sports or at Locked On Sabres to get a hold of us on Twitter. It is a Buffalo football victory Monday for a lot of Buffalo sports fans, but there's a lot to catch up on on the Sabres as well. The Sabres, by the way, were at the Bills game. If you were at the Bills game like I was, then you would have seen them before the game begun. Uh, Basically the whole team, not just like a couple of guys that went. We are talking the whole team that was up there on the field. I got the picture up on our YouTube channel right now. I mean, you got... Uh, Jeff Skinner, Bryson, Middlestat, Thompson. I mean, really, it's the whole team. So I can go through and name them all if you want. Everybody wearing a player's jersey. I think I got Zemgus Girgitz in here wearing his own jersey, though. I think he's been on the team long enough. I mean, almost uh, more than 10 years now that I'm sure Girgitz has been given like five custom Zemgus Girgitz's Bills jerseys by this point. Um, I wonder what the oldest Bills jersey is in his closet. It probably is 10 years ago, uh, would just be a guess on my part. So, anyways. Sabres, a lot to catch up on. A couple of preseason games in the books from the weekend that we'll talk about here coming up in a matter of moments. Uh, Also, more on Zach Benson and an update on his status with the team and how he's been playing. And also, a shift in goal. There's a shift at goaltender behind Devin Levi that I think is very interesting that we'll get to in the second segment of today's show. Let's start with some news, though, and start with some news away from from the Sabres, but this is a subject and a topic that we spoke about last week, and that is Trevor Zegras of the Anaheim Ducks, a restricted free agent, star winger, has had some highlight reel goals in the NHL so far already, some highlight reel assists as well, and the news had not been good on Zegras signing an extension with the Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim was being very cheap in this situation because they are one of the cheapest organizations in the entire NHL. Well, what happened? Zegers and his agent kind of caved a little bit. Three-year deal, $5.75 million. Zegers goes for the bridge contract. Before I even get to the Zegers end of this, this is where the Anaheim Ducks are as a franchise. They are lagging behind the rest of the NHL. I am so out on Anaheim right now and everything about their hockey department. The whole NHL, when it comes to these young guys, what are they gunning for? They are gunning for seven, eight-year contracts like the Sabres did with Dylan Cousins and Tage Thompson, like the Ottawa Senators have done with Jake Sanderson and Tim Stutzla, many others. There are a lot of teams, the, 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 um, the Tampa Bay Lightning have done this in the past, the Avalanche have done this in the past, a lot of top teams in the league, not just Buffalo and Ottawa, have been shooting for this type of thinking. And Anaheim just didn't want any part of it. Bridge deal, three years, $5.75 million. That's a dumb decision because now in three years' time, Instead of having him for five more years at $7 million, $8 million, they might have to pay nine or 10 if Zegers takes some big steps forward. So don't love the deal from Anaheim's perspective. And I think Zegers kind of caved a little bit. $5.75 million. Zegers is a better player than that. I think Zegers is on par with a Dylan Cousins in the NHL. And Cousins got $7.1 million. If I were Zegers in this camp, I'd go, okay, if you want to do the three year deal, that's fine. I'm into that. But you got to, you still got to pay seven. You got to pay the seven million dollars, and he was well below that. I think he's a severely underpaid player now. Player now for the next three years. Not that it'll matter because I don't think Anaheim's going to be competitive within three years. Sabers news: bunch of send downs, a lot of prospects. Um, you know your AHL tweener guys, your Jeremy Davies is of the world sent down to Rochester. More interesting to me are the players that remain. We'll talk about Zach Benson a little bit later on. He's still on the team. Two other guys that are interesting that they're still here. One, that's not a surprise. Matthew Savoy, of course, still with the team. Just update on that. Uh, He may join the team later this week. Uh, That was the update from the Sabres and Don Granato. So we'll keep an eye on that. Savoy might make a push for the lineup, a late push here, but we'll see. 
The guy that might be most interesting to me that is still with the Sabres is Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, who has never really been my favorite prospect, has been more and more impressive as camp and the preseason has gone along. He has looked smooth. He has looked skilled. He has made some nice passes. He's looked pretty good in his own end. There was a what? There was a backhand move he made against Toronto uh, a couple of uh, days ago where I went, ooh, I didn't even think he had that in him, the hands like that. So Ryan Johnson has been very impressive, I think, through camp. I think he's been impressing the Sabres as well. There are still 10 defensemen with the club. So I don't put his odds of making the team very high at all. I think he is very likely to be in the AHL. But good sign that Johnson would even be pushing at this point in camp for a spot. Um, Maybe they'd start him in the NHL, but I think, again, it's a long shot. I think Rochester is more in line for Johnson at this point. But keep an eye on him because he's been really good so far. I got an update for you on what's happening in goal. And I think it is super interesting, and it actually – is something I argued should happen before camp begun. Get to that and how well Zach Benson looked this weekend. Coming up here in the Locked on Sabres podcast, this episode is presented by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything. You need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Back here on the Locked On Savers podcast, Sneaky Joe DiBiase, thanks for making us your first listen every day. An update in goal. Something that I argued for before the preseason in camp that I didn't think was going to happen. But I think it's happening. I think before our eyes right now, Eric Comrie is taking over the backup goalie job. Devin Levi, unquestionably, is the number one. Lukanen, Ukapeka Lukanen, definitely came into camp as the favorite to be the number one goaltender. But I do think with five preseason games in the books, Comrie has pretty clearly outplayed Ukapeka Lukanen. And their most recent performances are an example of that. Lukanen playing against Toronto, allowing three goals in two periods, including the single... How many goals have the Sabres given up in the preseason so far? They've given up... Uh, 14 goals. Of all the 14 goals, the first goal that Lukanen allowed from the point against Toronto was by far unquestionably the softest goal that was allowed. And that is something that he does. That is a staple of Lukanen's struggles um, through the first couple of years of his career is he'll give up some soft ones. Now, it's okay. I was always a defender of Robin Leonard for this. Robin Leonard would give up a lot of soft goals. He had a very low, low danger save percentage. He would make up for it with top saves. Leonard, during his time with the Sabres, had one of the best high-danger save percentages. So, okay, some really frustrating ones. At least he makes up for it with some incredible saves that he shouldn't make. Lukanen doesn't make up for it. He'll let in the soft ones and then really doesn't make up for it. You know, so I, I've never really been a big fan of Lukanen as a player, as a prospect. Um, and I don't think he really is deserving of the number two job right now. Versus Eric Comrie. All right, well, let's look at what he did against the Pittsburgh Penguins on Thursday night. Comrie played the entire game and had 29 shots against him and saved 27 of them when there was almost four expected goals in that game. Pittsburgh ran through the Buffalo Sabres, and that wasn't a surprise. We talked about that game. The Sabres were playing in front of Eric Comrie, who got all 60 minutes of that game, and complete AHL blue line. Like, Riley Stillman was the number one defenseman in that game. And the Penguins, meanwhile, we're playing Crosby and Malkin and Latang and Gensel. Like they were playing their top guys against AHLers and prospects, sometimes ECHLers, by for the Sabres at that point in time. It's before a lot of their sundowns. 
And in that game, Comrie made a bunch of nice saves. He moved well. Um, I thought he had good rebound control in that game. I just thought Comrie was very impressive against Pittsburgh. And I'll go back to the point, the argument that I made for Comrie before camp. I've got two goalies, neither of which are great ideas to be the number two. But I've got one guy. And by the way, both were second round picks. Both at one point in time were really nice goalie prospects. Okay, well, I've got one guy in Uka Pekalukkanen that has not played well in the NHL ever and has never played well in the AHL ever. Okay, don't love that. He hasn't been great since the OHL. Now I have Eric Comrie. Now he's got more sample size. He's got more chances at this, more years. Eric Comrie's had one good year in the NHL. It's not great. It's better than zero. And Eric Comrie's been a good AHL goalie for seven years. Okay. It, he's good at that level. On both levels, AHL and NHL, Comrie over Lukanen. So if it really is about performance and who you trust more to give you a good season as Levi's number two, we've seen Comrie do it at least in Winnipeg. And we haven't seen Lukanen do it more than a week in January, a week in December last season. So I'm Comrie over Lukanen. Now, an added piece of this that has always been there is neither guy is eligible to go down to Rochester and a clear indication from the Sabres multiple times. They do not, because of practice reps, you know, having to be split then and game reps, they do not want to carry three goalies. I think in their heart of hearts, they don't want to carry three goalies. And this is what it will make it interesting for what happens if Comrie indeed is the number two to open the season. Elliot Friedman actually pondered this on 32 Thoughts uh, this week. Elliot Friedman talking about this said Comrie is right now kind of the number two. He didn't exactly say that. Our Paul Hamilton at WGR Sports Radio has said for a couple days now that he thinks Comrie in their building, Comrie is the leader in the clubhouse right now over Lukanen. Friedman was talking about, well, I wonder what they do with Lukanen. You know, because there's timing when it comes to waivers. Maybe if you put him on waivers at the right point in time, maybe he clears. I'm at a point where here's what I would just do with Luke. You know what? He was a second round pick and I, he's given me personally no indication that he's going to develop into a reliable NHL goalie. If it happens, I'll eat crow on it. And he's certainly got talent to do it. He's got the size. He's got the athleticism. He should be an NHL goalie because of his athleticism, but he's not, or at least he's not yet. So at this point, I would just bite the bullet. I'd wave him. And you know what? If you wave them and you lose them for free, whatever. Because what are you getting on the trade market? I hear a lot of that. Well, just wave them and if you lose them, whatever. And then I hear a lot of, oh, no, you can't do that. You got to trade them. You can't lose them for nothing. Go get something for them. Do we know what you're going to get for Lukanen? You're probably not getting more than a fourth or a fifth round pick, which in the NHL, that is nothing. That is absolutely nothing. To me, all that is is doing, that's saving face. And you know what? Fine. If the Sabres want to save face, get a mid-round pick back for him, fine. Do it. Uh, the only picks to me that matter are first-round picks in the NHL. And to a much lesser extent, maybe you could talk me into a second-round pick, is actually something of value. But it, to me, it really isn't. If you can get the second back, recoup that. They did that with Eric Portillo last year, right? Portillo, they got a third back. Used the third on him back in the day. If you can get a second for him, love it. You get if you get anything for him, love it. But I don't think he has a place on this Buffalo Sabres team. So to me, it is either Rochester or another club. That's where I'm at with Luke. And at this point in time, maybe I'm being too harsh on him. Um, but it's time to make the playoffs. And I got you know, the Sabres got a young goalie that they trust to develop into the number one in Devin Levi. The pressure on Devin on Luka Pekka Luke and to develop into a very good NHL goaltender, it's not that it's not that high. If he doesn't develop at all. Think of it this way. This is, this is, I guess, why I've landed in the whatever if you lose him. If Ukapeka Lukanen stays with the Sabres and doesn't develop long term, for the long term, what should the reaction be? Uh, okay. Well, that's fine. We got Devin Levi. Devin Levi's great. Devin Levi is going to be the number one. We can figure out number two. Number two, cheap backup. That's easy. We can figure that out. That's what's at stake. That's it. So that's where I'm at with Lukanen. Wave him. That, at this point in time, two preseason games left. 
I, I give him the two preseason games, play him at least one full one. I think, by the way, they should do one full game for Lukanen, one full game for Comrie. See if it changes after that. Um, but I would be on Comrie right now to be their number two. Zach Benson, this kid is unbelievable. We'll talk about him when we come back here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. Another strong performance from the Sabres rookie. That's coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. We are presented by Athletic Greens, the number one way to start your morning every morning. I drink it. I've got the shakes. I've got the I've got the drops, whether I want to make a shake in the morning. Maybe I'm running a little bit late Monday mornings, you know, I'm watching football late at night. So I want to get up early and get right to work. Um, I throw a couple drops of the AG1 drops right in my water or coffee. I never notice that it's there, but I'm giving all of those high quality vitamins and minerals. AG1 helps you build your health foundation first, raising the standard for quality in the supplement category science driven formulation of vitamins probiotics and whole food source nutrients i've been drinking ag1 i've been noticing a very overall feeling of health you know gives me a lot more energy to want to work out uh, during the day not skip a day if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine then try ag1 get a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase for those on the go moments, maybe you're running late and you need something for on the go. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. Locked on Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Final segment of today's show. And we saved the best for last. And that is another Zach Benson up- update. It's going as well as you could possibly imagine. He is playing with Tage Thompson. He is playing with Jeff Skinner. Still going into the final week of training camp, while other prospects by Yuri Kulik, Isaac Roseanne, and others are now skating with each other. They're still with the Sabres, but they're skating with each other at practice more than they're skating with real NHLers. And that's why I think at this moment in time, all signs point to Zach Benson still opening the season on the Sabres' top line. That's what I would guess. Benson against Columbus. What a game against Columbus, by the way. It, it, a fun game to watch if you were Saturday afternoon. So, you know, it was 70 degrees out. You had college football. If you weren't watching it, I get it. But me watching it, Columbus got out to an early lead. 3-1, right? Like, they looked good. They looked strong. They were all over the Sabres. And the Sabres charge back in the game. And they got themselves into a position where they were down one in the third period. By the way, Devin Levi multiple breakaway saves. Like he did let in three goals on the night, but I thought he had a pretty strong performance. Um, Levi did. He made 26 saves and 29 shots. If you're wondering how, uh, how busy he was. So the Sabres got themselves into a position to get within one in the third period. Jeff Skinner had scored a goal. Henry Okiharu scored a goal. That was a softy given up by the Columbus netminder. but okay, we're down one third period and Zach Benson, a great puck retrieval in the offensive zone gets an assist, leads to a Jeff Skinner game-tying goal. All right, it's 3-3. Power play. Benson goes back out there. He's on the number one power play unit. He's playing in the high slot. And the puck's getting moved around well. He's moving the puck around well. Another puck retrieval by Zach Benson to help way, way back before the goal, but it sets up the foundation for the possession to get this goal. Benson charges to the front of the net. And you know what? Right place, right time. But this is his hockey sense on display that he was in the right spot. And he finishes with an open opportunity in the slot. Backhand shot over the blocker to win the game for the Sabres. Four to three. And they held on from there. Benson adds a goal and an assist total. And he is lighting the lamp. And he's adding assists. He is looking good without the puck. He is just so impressive. And the fact that he's getting results on the score sheet, uh, I think, is helping his case as well. Don Granado, when talking about Zach Benson, I love the way he talks about him, and I think the way he talks about him is another indication that Benson's going to start the season with the Sabres. Before I even get to what Granado said about him as a player, Granado got asked pointedly, you know, well, you want to see him grow, right? He was talking about Benson's ability to and to you to use his size to his advantage. Yeah, he's smaller, five foot nine, but he's able to bob and weave into certain coverage points uh, as a four checker and in the defensive zone that a uh, Tage Thompson or a Jordan Greenway wouldn't be able to because he'd be bumping into defensemen. He wouldn't be able to nudge his way into the space where Benson can kind of you know again kind of nuzzle his way in, get to a little pocket uh, of space in the corner. 
that a bigger player would not be able to, and he's able to fight the puck out. He got followed up when asked about that, Granado did. And like, well, you want to see him grow, right? You do want to see him grow. And Granado really said, no, I don't need to see him grow. I want to see him get stronger. He did say that. I want to see Benson get stronger. He didn't say grow. The fact that he's only five foot nine, 160, you know, maybe he'd like him to be 175 and that'd be 15 pounds of muscle. But I don't need to see him grow. Like that sentiment from Granado. I mean, he is he is a coach that take a young player like that. Yeah, he's a little bit undersized. I'll get him in positions to help him out. In fact, that's what I think he's doing with Tage Thompson, Jeff Skinner. Is okay, well. Do we really want to bumping around and playing physical in his own end uh, a lot? You know, having him have the puck is is a good thing for him, and it limits responsibility and it limits pressure on him. And when you play with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner, you have the puck all the time. You don't you're not as reliant in your own end, even though Benson's fine at that. Um, but he's, if he's playing with Kyle Poso, Zemgus Girgensons, you know, look at what Peyton Krebs did last year. Peyton Krebs had to ramp up as a physical player, you know. Um, a defensive player as well. There's more grinding on the body when you're doing that. And I think that Benson getting to play in the offensive zone so much because he's playing with Tajan Skinner is actually really good for his development as opposed to playing in a bottom six role. So other comments Granado made about uh, Benson. What, what he loves in his game, quote, compete, sense, feel, situational awareness, very intelligent hockey player. He could steal and strip pucks as good as anyone. I don't think he needs to grow, to be honest. He's a smart, smart hockey player that is a coach talking glowingly about a young kid that without saying he's NHL ready all of that to me sounds like Don Renato saying he's NHL ready he's not talking about the goal scoring he's not talking about the playmaking he's not talking about the stick handling look at the words he's saying compete sense feel situational awareness hockey sense intelligence smart smart hockey player like all of these things are the things that get an 18-year-old an early crack in the NHL. Not the speed and skill. You, we assume you've got that by being a high first-round pick. But all that other stuff, what you do away from the puck, that's what gets you a shot when you're 18 years old. And Benson is doing all of that, and he has all of that uh, to his game. We'll see if we get more Zach Benson. In fact, we will. Granado basically said it. Uh, we've got two preseason games left for the Sabres. They will play on Wednesday night against the Columbus Blue Jackets in Columbus, and they will play Friday night to end the preseason home against the Penguins. We are 10 days away from the regular season opener against the New York Rangers. That is going to do it for us today here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your listen every day. We will talk to you next time. If you want to reach out to the show, at Sneaky Joe Sports, at Locked On Sabres. Thanks for listening to Locked On Sabres, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.